With each passing day, the Iglesia de Cristo draws closer to its centennial celebration, a celebration of God's blessings to His people, a nation that arose from a small third world country. It can now be found in almost every corner of the globe. There are those that have been chosen by God to lead His nation in these last days. Who are they? And what responsibilities and mission does He give each one? And what is it that ties these leaders together as instruments to accomplish God's will He has orchestrated for His people? There are stories that people tell, and then there are stories that are never told, but live on in people's hearts that shape their paths and their lives. Join us in this 12-part centennial series and see what story will live on in you. You can tell that he sincerely loves every single member of the church and he really wants all of us to be saved and he works so hard to do it. This is the first opportunity I've had to have had to meet him and I thought it was great that he came here and showed his support and it's obvious the uh, number of people that showed up today uh, really do love him. I was really, really excited. Um, he came to our district not too long ago in Orlando, I would say maybe about two years ago. And it was such a wonderful experience and to be able to see him come to a dedication, it was just even more, it's really neat. <laughs> In the four years since Brother Eduardo became the Executive Minister of the Iglesia de Cristo, he has led the dedication of 513 houses of worship, ordained 2,248 ministers, and has launched numerous new projects and events all geared to edify and strengthen the faith of the members of the Iglesia de Cristo throughout the world. Now what, what the world of members of the church are seeing is that the, the, the concern is such that uh, he, he, he's bringing the teachings himself by uh, visiting uh, all over the world. He's unwavering, there's a cool calm that surrounds him and for sure when it comes to all of the aims, the objectives, and also the projects of the church, he is indaunted. He fully is prepared to lead us when it comes to being successful in every endeavor. Ang kapatid na Eduardo ay sa tulong ng Diyos. Sinikap niyang mula sa kanyang pagsisimula, kumo ang inabot niyang iglesia ay nakakalat na sa mundo. Sinikap niya na marating ang lahat ng dako na naroon ng mga kapatid. Siya mismo tinitignan niya ang kalagayan bago niya pagpasyahan ang pagbili ng mga binibiling properties ng iglesia sa iba't ibang bansa. Nakita niya, narating niya. Having a leader that is so tirelessly willing to uh, exert every human effort to be sure everyone is reached, to be sure that everyone is touched. It is the same love and concern Brother Robert remembers seeing in Brother Aranyo G. Manalo, the late executive minister of the church. There was a young, uh, a young boy who was so very eager to see Brother Arani Manalo, uh, climbed up on top of the fence and was just, you know, it's way off to the side, and but was sitting on top of the fence holding out his hand. And he had absolutely no chance of getting through the crowd or anything, but uh, Brother Arani noticed him and uh, 
somehow just it, it just drew his attention and uh, th went through all of the crowd and, and insistently w worked his way over there to the fence and just reached up to that little that little boy and uh, and, and and shook his hand. Makita niyang kalagayan ng maraming kapatid na nasa evacuation center. Ang sabi ng kapatid na Iran, gusto ko silang makita. Tinipo namin ang mga kapatid sa lokal ng San Fernando. Nangasiwa ng pagsamba ang kapatid na Iran. Sa panahon pa lang ng kanilang pagtuturo, maagos ang luha sa mga bata ng KRD. Yun din ang unang pagkakataon na nakita ko. Pagkatapos ng pangangasiwa ng pagsamba, hindi pa sila nakapagbibihis. Sinasalubong niya ang mga kapatid, siyang lumalapit. Ang mga kapatid na nanangis na umiiyak sa kanila. Lahat yun, ipinaramdam niya na hindi sila pababayaan ng Diyos. I guess there's just uh, an endless number of just small, uh, genuine gestures, you know, that just really makes you uh, feel and, and know that uh, the e executive minister, uh, uh, whether it was Brother Felix Manalo, Brother Eduardo G. Manalo, or our current executive minister, Brother uh, Eduardo, they genuinely and deeply care about uh, the, the, the feeling and, and, and the life of every individual member of the church. As a young man going to school, Brother Rizzolino also witnessed and felt that same concern from Brother Felix Manalo, the messenger of God in these last days. When I was uh, in college, attending worship services at 3 p.m., their brother Felix was always preaching, imagine that. What a blessing for me. And then he said, I'm not asking you to follow me. Let us all follow the words of God. He said, if I have only the power to embrace all of you, I'll do that. So all of us could go to heaven together. That speaks of so much care and love for the church. Brother Rizzolino began his ministry in 1958 and has witnessed the leadership of Brother Felix Manalo, Brother Aranjo, and now with Brother Eduardo. We know that God appointed these leaders because the power is there, the wisdom is there, the knowledge is there. He does not just give the office, but with it, he gives again the wisdom, the knowledge and the power. Appointing leaders for his people has always been a policy of our Almighty God, even during biblical times. Throughout Bible history, God has always made it his policy to select leaders for his people. The Lord our God utilizes prophecy. And when one is a fulfillment of prophecy, that is the proof positive that they have been chosen or sent by God. This was true when it came to John the Baptist. There were prophecies referring to him, especially in Isaiah 40, verse 3, and there are also prophecies that pertain to the greatest messenger of all, the Son of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Napakahalaga, masiguro natin na yung lahat ng ating sinusunod at tinutupad sa ating paglilingkod ay utos at aral ng Diyos. E ang nagsasalita ng mga salita ng Diyos ayon sa Biblia e ang sugo ng Diyos. Kaya mahalaga ang sugo dahil mahalaga yung daladala nilang mensahe 
mahalaga yung daladala nilang aral. Hindi tayo makapaglilingkod ng karapat dapat sa Panginoon Diyos pag hindi nakasalig doon sa kanyang mga aral at utos. So whether it was in early times or whether it's now, God is still the one who chooses um, because He's the one God placed there. You know, He's God's mouthpiece and He's the eyes and ears and He's the one who's, who's directing us in the way that God wants us to go. Uh, totoo na meron tatlong na mahala hanggang sa kasalukuyan sa Iglesia ni Cristo sa uling araw. Ang sugo ng Diyos, ang kapatid na Felix Y. Manalo, ang kapatid na Iranyo G. Manalo at ang kasalukuyan ngayon ay ang kapatid na Eduardo B. Manalo. May kanikanyang pananagot ang ibinigay sa kanila ang Diyos. All the sons were presented to Samuel and the dad thought that one of his sons who was a veteran soldier in the Israeli army then looks like a king has the appearance of a king you know he presented him but the prophet no not this one the next no not this one not this one not this one and then when David was presented who was just a, a very young man, just taking care of a ship, then the prophet said, this one is the Lord's choice. And then he said, people look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Nagpalaganap siya dito sa Pilipinas, hinugol niya ang halos buong buhay niya sa pagpapalaganap at pagtuturo ng mga salita ng Diyos, kaya napatatag ang napakaraming lokal sa buong Pilipinas. When he would challenge uh, the priests in front of their houses of worship to a debate, so people will know the truth. Imagine such courage. Someone could just shoot him right there and then. Ayaw niya, ayaw niya ng duwag. Basta uh, manindigan ka. Sapagkat ipinangako naman ng Diyos sa 41 ng Isayas na siya'y gagawing bagong kasangkapang pangkiik na dudurugin ng durog ang lahat ng masasamang pananampalataya. At yan ang nakita natin ginawa ng sugo ng Diyos sa huling araw. It would be that same courage, that same faith that would guide Brother Felix as he administered the Iglesia de Cristo during the Japanese occupation of the Philippines. What the Japanese wanted was just create a federation of churches of Christ. They felt if it's united, it's easier to control. Professor Ricardo Jose is among the leading experts on Philippine history during the Japanese occupation, having written over 20 publications on the subject. I think in the case of the Iglesia Ni Cristo, the Iglesia Ni Cristo, uh, I think the, they, they, they did not attend the meetings held by the Japanese to create this federation. And while they asked the leaders of the different churches to sign this uh, an agreement that we will all work together, uh, the Iglesia Ni Cristo did not do that. When the Japanese would like him to be the leader of all the religions, but... Hindi niya tinanggap. Mundalin daw si sa Port Santiago yung Samurizer, nakaganon lang. Nahahapdi ano siya. Gusto mo bang mamatay? Sabi niya, sino may gusto mamatay? Pero kung gusto niyo mamatay, ano magagawa ko? 
so because of that, uh, the people of the Iglesia were persecuted by the Japanese. Soldiers were sent when he was preaching in Tayuman, uh, trying to get him down, but he kept on teaching, and the Japanese soldiers sat down there and listened. Such courage. Despite the imminent dangers of war, Brother Felix continued to lead the ministers and evangelical workers to do whatever was necessary to ensure the spiritual well-being of the members. You know, when we were in the evacuation, if I could tell you, it was from, from town to town, they passed by in the field to give us the lesson. So in, in a way that caused the Iglesia to spread further because as the members would spread outside of Manila, more people found out about it and it was able to spread during the war. The Iglesia de Cristo would extend beyond the island of Luzon by the end of the Japanese occupation. During Brother Felix, when we didn't even have a, a house of worship, people worship just in the house of uh, the brethren. Brother Felix knew that in order for the members to properly worship God, houses of worship needed to be built. So, balit sa pagbilis na pagdami ng membro ng Iglesia ni Cristo, ay doon din karoon ng pangangailangan ng bawat lokal na magkaroon sila ng mas maayos na gusaling sambahan. Among the first large houses of worship designed with this vision was Riverside in San Juan, Manila, which would also serve as the central office of the church. Mataas na lugar po ang Riverside na maganda po sa panahon pong yun, 1956, Bihira po sa ating bansa ang, sa bansang Pilipinas ang ganong uri. Inside, we see, even if this, the chairs, it's really uh, different. On that time that it was uh, first uh, built, you will be amazed already that how come our charts can really get nice mm -hmm. and grand to uh, place of worship. At nung po namin nadama, kahit po kapi pagod, puyat, walang, taga pong nawalan lahat ng makita namin ang, ang Riverside, ang pinagawa ng sugo sa uling araw. Today, the construction of houses of worship in the Iglesia de Cristo continues with that same vision. Ang Engineering and Construction Department na kinakasangkapan ng pamahala ay nakapagtatalaga ng mahigit sa isang daang gusaling sambahan sa loob ng isang taon. Katumbas nito ang isang gusaling sambahan sa bawat dalawang araw, dalawang putatlong oras at apat na putwalong minuto. Ang disenyo ng ating mga gusaling sambahan ay mula sa kaisipan at idea ng ating sugo ng Diyos sa huling araw na kanyang ipinagawa sa mga unang arkitekto. Kaya marami tayong makikita na malalaking gusaling sambahan na itinayo nung panahon ng sugo. Uh, sinisikap po ng aming tanggapan ng construction department ng Iglesia ni Cristo na mapataas pang lalo ang uri, hindi lamang ng kalidad, kundi ang paggawa ng mga gusaling sambahan may angkop sa lalo pang pagsulong ng Iglesia ni Kristo.
With the Lord guiding Brother Felix in his ministry, the pioneering members, ministers, evangelical workers, and officers were equipped with the spiritual guidance they needed to build a solid foundation of faith. Lessons they have also passed on to their own children and grandchildren. Sinasabi ko sa kanila, huwag kayong mag-aaling langan tungkol sa pagiging sugo ng kapatid na Felix Manalo at tungkol sa Iglesia ni Cristo. Huwag kayong tataligod. Ano man mangyari, huwag kayong tataligod. Yeah. Para sa akin, ang pinakamahalaga sa mga natutuhan ko sa aking ama na isa ring ministro sa iglesia, naglingkod sa loob ng ministeryo, sa loob ng limampu, limamput apat na taon hanggang sa kanyang pagpanaw, ay ang tungkol sa pagpapasakop, pakikipag-ugnay at pagsunod sa sugo at sa pamamahala na inilagay ng Diyos sa iglesia. Napakahalaga nito sapagkat dito tayo makatitiyak na ang ating sinusunod at ang ating tinutupad sa ating mga paglilingkod sa Diyos ay mga kalooban nga ng Panginoon Diyos. That is the legacy, the evidence, the proof that even if we did not see them personally, the young people now, there was such a man used by God to teach His words. They're gone, but the teachings they left are alive. In April 1963, Members from all over the Philippines gathered at the local congregation of San Francisco del Monte for the funeral of Brother Felix Munalo, the messenger of God in these last days. While saddened by the news, the members of the Iglesia de Cristo knew that the work he started would continue. Patuloy na natanggap ng Iglesia ang mga aral at utos ng Diyos sapagkat merong pamamahalang inilagay siya sa Iglesia na siyang pinagkatiwalaan ng kanyang mga salita para sila ang magpahayag, sila ang magturo sa atin ng mga salita ng Diyos. Ten years prior to his death, Brother Felix called a meeting of all district ministers. Sabi ni kapatid na Felix Manalo, kung ako'y mamatay, sino'y papalit niyo sa akin? Wala kaming kibo. In 1953, nung mahalal si kapatid na R.D. That both was not to divide the church, but for God to tell them who His choice is. Brother Eranio Gimano Nalo was elected by the district ministers. Hindi halal na siya. Bigyan natin ng dalawang katulong. Nahalal si Cipriano Sandoval. Chaka Chaka Ramos, Topil Ramos. To prove that it is God's choice, the appointment is given, but with it goes the wisdom and the, the power. Ang unang unang gapanin siya ang nagtuturo, siyang gumagawa ng mga leksyon na itinuturo sa buong iglesia.
Ikalawa, doon sa Isayas 43, 6, na ang iglesang ito sa pangunguna ng sugo ng Diyos ay na maitatag na sa malayong silangan, ang iglesang ito makararating sa kanduran. Yun ang assignment ng kapatid na Iranyo Manalo. After his visit in 1968, Brother Aranyo sent ministers to watch over the growing number of brethren in the U.S., sharing with them the vision for the church outside of the Philippines. Bago po kami umalis papuntang Estados Unidos, kinausap kami ni KRB. Yung pinangaralan po kami na kayo pinapadala doon, kakasangkapanin para sa mga kapatid, para dumami mga kapatid. Alam niyo po yung hindi, hindi ko po maaring malimutan na sinabi niya, sana magsalikop kayo. Kasi po si Kamembrere nandun na sa California. Tapos si Kaanghel, New York. 45 years since the church reached the West, the Iglesia de Cristo can now be found not just in North America, but throughout the world, with many more congregations being added every year. Yun na po ang nakikita kong natupad sa kanyang sinabing, sana magsalikop kayo. Hindi lamang po sa dito sa bansang to nagsalikop, kundi sa buong mundo. ay merong pang isang ginampanan ang kapatid na Iranyo Di Manalo na nasa Biblia rin. Pagka ang iglesia ay naitatag na, nasibala na ng sugo sa malayong silangan, at kapag ka ito'y nakarating na doon sa kanluran, ang kasunod noon ay makababalik ito sa dating tahanan. Sapagkot noong March 31, 1996, nagkaroon ng isang malaking okasyon ang iglesia na isinagawa ang kauna-unahang pagsamba sa Jerusalem. Noong pechang yon natupad ang sinabi ng Diyos na makamabalik ang iglesia ni Kristo sa kanyang dating tahanan. He was able to be the instrument of the Lord our God in many accomplishments for the church. And all of this was because Brother Iranyo G. Manalo fully believed and was convinced of the work that God had placed before him. The Iglesia de Cristo reaching the West has made it possible for Brother Donald and many others to not only receive the truth, but also now help with the continued spreading of it as ministers of the Gospel. Kasi centralized tayo eh. Hindi naman tayo katulad ng ibang organisasyon na wahiwalay ang administrasyon dito. Centralized tayo kaya napakahalaga na tatanggap ang pangkalahatan. Kaya yung lahat ng mga pagsubaybay, pangangalaga, pagtuturo, yun ay ginagampanan ng ating tagapamahalang pangkalahatan mula dito sa ating central office. Just as the first century Church of Christ had a centralized administration, the Church in these last days also maintains that same pattern of administration, wherein Church matters are brought to the attention of the central administration. After the construction of the central office, additional plots of land were added to the central office complex. Guided by God, Brother Aranyo's vision continues to allow the central compound to expand and grow to meet the needs of the administration. Ngayon ay patuloy ang expansion at pagdaragdag ng mga karagdagan pang mga gusali sa loob at labas nitong ating central office complex dito sa Quezon City.
In 1994, 41 years after Brother Aranya was elected to be Brother Felix Manalo's successor, another historic meeting of district ministers and ministers in the Economic Council of the Church was convened. Na isagawa ang halalan at pagpili ng magiging pangunahing katulong ng kapatid na Aranya Manalo at ang napagkaisahan ng buong kapulungan ng mga tagapangasiwa ng iba't ibang distrito kasama pang ibang mga kinakatulong sa tanggapan ng kapatid na Irano Manalo, nagkaisa kaming lahat na ang kapatid na Eduardo Manalo ang siyang mapagtibay na magiging pangunahing katulong at kung sakasakali itutulot ng Diyos, sila rin ang hahalin sa pamamahala sa Iglesia. Ngayon ay naganap noong May 1994. Masasabi ko na yun ay udyok ng Espiritu Santo. After 46 years of leading the church, the executive minister, Brother Aranyo Manalo, was laid to rest. Namahinga ang ating mahal na kapatid, August 31, 2009. Nagampanan ang lahat ng kanyang ipinagagawa sa kanya ng Diyos. Buong giting, buong tagumpay na kanyang nagawa. Sa justo, hindi naman sa tao kasi. Ayan nga sabi na nyo, siya gagawa, di ba? Sino pipigil? On many Tuesday mornings in the lobby of the central office, a group of brethren from all over the world begins to form, hoping for the opportunity to meet with the executive minister of the church. We arrived to the Philippines. The first thing before we do anything, the first thing we make sure that we uh, have to first go to uh, Balikbayan. It, it's a different feeling when you go to the central office. It was, it was a solemn, it was almost like a worship service. It was a for solemnity in the complex. Just to be able to go there, to see the central office, to, to see the temple, and if you're able to meet the administration, it's just a great blessing that um, we can't, you know, pass up. That day that we went actually fell on my birthday. We were able to get a family picture with him and aside from that we decided or I decided why not ask since it's my birthday to have a, ask for a prayer since we're there from the administration. You know what more could you ask for? What more can you request? Balik Bayan Day is a special time reserved for members of the Iglesia de Cristo from outside the Philippines to have audience with the church administration. And now through Brother Eduardo's pastoral visits the opportunity to have audience with the executive minister extends far beyond those Tuesday mornings. Mayroon ding pinagagawa o gagampanan ang pamamahalang ito ng kapatid na Eduardo B. Manalo. Alam natin na iglesia sa panahon ng kapatid na Eduardo B. Manalo ay napakalawak na, napakarami na ng kaanib. Kamangha-mangha na dalawampu't-libang bansa ang narihiso tayo, inaasikaso yun ang ating tagapamahala. Iyon ang tungkulin niya. All of which are happening at a time when many other churches are closing the doors to their own places of worship. Tonight with the fond farewell, downtown Tampa's oldest church held its last service today. 
After 160 years of Sunday Masses, the bells at St. Mary's Church will never ring again. Kaya awa ng Diyos sa loob lang ng pamamahala ng apat na tong pamamahala ng kapatid Eduardo Manalo ay isang daan at dalawampu na ang nabibiling property sa iba't ibang panig ng mundo at ang karamihan dito ay mga simbahan na iglesia katolika at mga kapilya ng iba't ibang sekta ng protestante. Among them was the former Greek Orthodox Church which was purchased by the Iglesia de Cristo in 2012. Oh, it's so inspirational. I, I, today I was just thinking back when we first started out in the hotels, days in, and it occurred to me that we didn't have any activities. From that, nothing to this. It's just too much. It's like, it's just surreal because they're so big. And then there's a school right next to it that belongs to us also. And the parking lot and everything. And it's um, right here in the middle of the nation's capital. Napakaraming taong maanib ngayon sa iglesia. Sa pamamagitan ng pamamahalang ito ng kapatid Eduardo Manalo, napuspusan ang kanyang ginagaw magpapapalaganap. At nang nakikita niyo po sa aking likuran, Wala pong mapagsidlan o wala na hong halos maupuan ang ating mga kapatid at ang mga kasama nilang mga panauhin sapagkat napakarami po ang tumugon. The spreading of the gospel in the different parts of the world has given way for many to be introduced to the biblical truths taught inside the English and the Christo. I find it very interesting the fact that obviously it's about actually what the Bible actually states rather than what you think it states. So in that point of view, I find it very, very interesting. The Church of Christ, the true Church of Christ emerges in the Philippines. Me by Save Good Law, Jesus here. Yeah. All same na me come. And me, me just come na when I'm, me start Lord Jesus Church by me me look him because also they give him Bible start na him so we talk him uh, chapter lo Bible and me look him na and me like him Walang tigil sa paggawa. Walang tigil sa pagpaplano. Walang tigil sa pag-iisip. Hindi sa tumitigil kay nakita natin ang mga pagbibiyahin niya. Pero hindi niya inaalintaan na yan. To see and know the compassion that he has for us and to be able to speak so eloquently the way he did and for us to not be hindered, teaching us not to be hindered by the trials in this life, not to be worried about that because God has it all. Especially with everything that's happening, it is very important to just know that no matter how far the church administration is from us, they always think about us and they always care about us and they would always do whatever they can to strengthen our faith. So I think it's very inspirational because everyone needs that inspiration. Lagi niyang itinuturo sa mga pagsamba na kailangan maging matibay ang pananampalatay ng mga kapatid sapagkat ngayon, itong mga huling araw na ito, napakaraming maaring umagaw ng ating pananampalataya. Oo, nasa mundo tayo, maaaring maapektuhan tayo. Pero tandaan natin, tunay ang ating pagkaiglesa ni Kristo. Tunay ang ating Panginoong Diyos. Nakahanda siyang duminig sa ating mga panawagan sa Kanya. Nakahanda siyang tumulong sa atin sa panahon ng ating pangangailangan. Ano lamang ang kinakailangan? pahalagahan natin ang ating kahalalan. 
magpakatibay tayo sa ating pananampalataya, ipakipaglaban natin ang ating pananampalataya, sundin natin ang lahat ng kanyang mga kautusan. Kaya nakita natin ang battle cry ng ating tagapamahala ngayon, ipakipaglaban natin ang pananampalataya. Pinalalakas natin ang ating pag-asa at pagkakilala sa ating Panginoon. Hindi tayo nakikilo sa pananampalataya, determinado tayo sa ating kahalalan na tinamo mula sa ating Panginoon. Hello, I'm Brother Edwul Zabala and this is the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition. Today's topic, sharing the gift of salvation. And there is no doubt that they all believe in God. But who is the God believed in by these Bible professing people? We'll find out when we return on Face the Truth. Inyong napanood ang ilan sa mga pangyayari sa Iglesia ni Cristo nitong mga nagdaang araw. Todos nuestros queridos amigos al mensaje, un programa presentado por la Iglesia de Cristo. Soy el hermano Juan Fisher. Nakikinig kayo sa Iglesia ni Cristo Radio, BCEM 954. Yun ang malaking gampani ng ating tagapamahalang pangkalahatang ngayon. Sapagkat ang nakalagay doon, ang Diyos ay magtatanyag hanggang sa wakas ng lupa. Yung salitang magtatanyag, tinignan namin sa ibang sali ng Biblia, nakalagay sa ibang sali, ibobroadcast. Sa ibang sali naman ay will announce all over the world. I'm thankful that uh, we're able to utilize every aspect of our lives in serving God. That, um, you know, even the smallest um, talents or abilities that you may have, it's still a big help in spreading the word of, of our Almighty God. So it's, it's great. I think that in performing our duties as INC TV, we're learning how to, how to share. And in sharing our faith, we're able to be strengthened as well. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Thank you, Paul, for supporting INC TV so much. Bakit kailang itanyag? Bakit kailang ibroad ka sa buong mundo? Ang sabi sa talata, narito ang iyong kaligtasan at narito din ang iyong kagantihan. Walang ibang iglesia sa buong mundo na may kaligtasan kundi ito. Ang Diyos mismo may sabi, narito ang kaligtasan, narito ang kagantihan. Kailangan makilala ito ng tao, kailang ito itanyag. So we're here um, at the chapel grounds of Montclair in Southern California and everyone is getting prepared. Uh, they're going to spruce up the exterior and the landscaping of four houses. You can feel that when it comes to all of the activities of the church nowadays, they are geared to bring the entire church to an even higher level of acknowledgement by our fellow men. A project for members of the Church of Christ to express God's goodness through theatric and cinematic acting. Do you think, do you think a man, a, a man made that pattern? Oh. Was it God? Yes! Yes, Travis is right, man. It was God who created all the building blocks of life that we now know today is the period. Kaiba ang kalagayan ng Iglesia ni Cristo ngayon sa pamamahala ng kapatid na Eduardo. Sumasampalataya kami. Ang nakasulat sa Biblia, ginagawa na ng Diyos ang mga huling pagsasaayo sa Iglesia sa mga huling araw na ito. magatang kababayan ko, kapatid ko. Ito po ay sa pakikipagtulungan ng FYM Foundation na isa sa nilalayon ay lingapin ang ating mga kababayan. Lahat sana mga ng mga proyekto, mga gawaing inilulusad ng kapatid Eduardo B. Manalo, yakapin natin. Sapagkat sa pagkakaisa natin, naluluwalhati natin ating Panginoon Diyos, na pagbigyan natin ng kahiling ng ating tagapamahala at higit sa lahat ay yun ang ikapagtatamo natin ng kaligtasan at ng buhay na walang hanggang.
through their visits, the pastoral letters, and the worship service lessons they prepare, their love extends to each member of the Iglesia de Cristo and has been doing so for almost 100 years. And throughout the years, their lives, their leadership, and their love continues to teach us lessons not about them, but of the one who has placed them. Ang iglesia ni Kristong ito lamang ang nagtataglay ng turong mula sa Diyos. Wala ritong turo ang kapatid na Felix Manalo. Wala ritong turo ang kapatid na Eranyo Manalo at maging ang kapatid na Eduardo. Ang turo na tinatanggap ng buong iglesia at yun ang ating ipinalilaganap, salita ng Diyos. Dinanihan ko kayo, mga kayong lesi ni Cristo. Iyakapin ninyo si Cristo sa pamamagitan ng inyong pananampalataya. Palakihin ninyo ang pag-ibig sa Diyos na lumalang ng ating buhay at nagbibigay ng ating lakas at ng lahat ng ating kapalar kaginawakan inyo siyang sampahin parate sa pagpakatibay. Ikalang pagpitaganan Huwag magkamali na kayo lumapastanga. Inihiling ko sa Diyos, basbasa niya kayong maging matibay na Iglesia ni Cristo. Puspusin niya kayo ng pananampalataya at ng pag-ibig. Magkaroon kayo ng malaking pakikipagpakang manay kayo sa inyong sarili sapagkat kayo may pagkabuhay na magbuhin ng mga patay. Mamamatay kayo, ngunit ang kamatayang diyan di para lang natulog. Alin ang ipapalit ninyo roon? Alin? Alin mga bagay natin dito ang tinatangkilik ang ipapalit ninyo riyan sa kayaman ng darating na yan sa atin? Walang kukupa. Kaya mag-iis. Mag-iis. Huwag ninyong bigyang halaga ang pag-uusig at ang mga pagkutya ng tao na lahanin ninyo si Ito. Itinilagan ni Jesus ang pag-ibig sa Diyos at ang pag-ibig sa mga makasalanang nagbabalik loob at sumasampalataya sa Kanya. Ibinigay niya ang kanyang buhay. Ibinigay niya ang lahat sa kamatayan at sa kairapan. Ngunit pinupay siya ng Diyos na yun ay nakalukluk sa kanya ng Ama. Kaya... Bumali kayo sa Diyos na mayari ng inyong bukay. Lumapit kayo sa Kanya na may pag-ibig at pananampalataya. Magbalik loob at inyong itakul ang lahat ng kasamang iyan ang bumibigil at magpakatibay kayo sa paglingkod at manatili kayo. Darating na si Kristo. Yan po ang dahilan ng aming pag-aayos sa iglesia. Pati buhay, lalo na pamumuhay. Pagdating ni Kristo, kasama kayo mula sa lahat ng dakong nabot ng iglesia si Kristo'y darating. Darat na niya ang iglesia, nakakalat na sa iba't ibang panig ng daidig. Sabi ng Biblia, lahat ng mga kumahalat na yon, titipunin niya para isama sa kaligtasan. Huwag lang kayong maalis sa iglesia. Ang pagpapali inilalaan sa mga sumasamba. Kaya masama hindi po sumasamba. Paano ka pagpapalain ng Diyos? Kaparis ng sabi nito, Diyos ko, pakinggan mo ako. Saan man ako naroon, kahit ako'y nasa malayo, kahit narito na ako sa wakas ng lupa, hihingi ako sa iyo ng tulong. Pagka ako nang hihina, akahin mo ako, ilagay mo ako sa isang dakong matatag. Ilagay mo ako sa dako ng bato ng kaligtasan. 
Ano pong sabi sa atin ng Biblia? Bakit sa Diyos tumatawag ang mga nagdaranas ng iba't ibang uri ng mga suliranin at pagsubok sa buhay na ito? Sapagat ang sabi sa atin, ang Panginoon Anya ang ating ampunan. Ang Diyos Anya ang ampunan ng mga nasa kahirapan, ng mga dukha, ng mga nangangailangan kahit sa panahon ng mga kalamidad sa kanilang buhay. Subok na natin yan, mga kapatid. Alam ko, marami sa inyo, hindi na bagong bagay yan sa inyong buhay. Sapagkat nang dumaang kayo sa pagsubok, nang dumaang kayo sa mga suliranin, lumapit kay sa Diyos, sa Kanya kayo tumawa. Hindi kayo nabigo at ang katunayan hanggang ngayon, Iglesia kay ni Kristo, nakapagtataguyod kayo sa paglilingkod sa Kanya. Yan ang gustong mangyari ng ating Panginoon. Mabaon natin itong pananampalataya natin hanggang doon sa makarating tayo sa pilig niya. Wala sanang maiwan kahit isa. Lahat sana tayo makapagtagumpay. Ano man ang pagsubok natin sa buhay na ito, makatiyak ang bawat isa sa atin na tayo ay makapagtataguyod hanggang sa wakas. Thank you.